from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hi, I'm Peter Burris, analyst at Wikibon. Welcome to another Wikibon the Cube digital community event. This one's sponsored by HP and focusing on hybrid storage. Like all of our digital community events, this one will feature about 25 minutes of video, followed by a crowd chat, which will be your opportunity to ask your questions, share your experiences, and push forward the community's thinking on the important issues facing business today. So what are we talking about today? Again, hybrid storage. Let's get going. So what is hybrid storage? In a lot of shops, most people have associated the cloud with public cloud. But as we gain experience with the challenges associated with transforming to digital business, in which we use data as a singular value producing asset, increasingly IT professionals are starting to realize this important relationship between data, storage, and cloud services. And in many respects, that's really what we're trying to master today, is a better understanding of how the business is going to use data to affect significant changes in how it behaves in the marketplace. And it's that question of behavior, that question of action, that question of location that is pushing business to think differently about how its cloud architectures are going to work. We're going to keep data proximate to where it's created, to where it's going to be used, to where it's going to be able to generate value, which demands that we have storage resources in place close to that data, proximate to that activity, near that value producing activity, and that the cloud services will have to follow. In many respects, that's what we're talking about when we talk about hybrid cloud today. We're talking about the increasing recognition that we're going to move cloud services to the data as the default and not move the data into the cloud, into the public cloud specifically. So it's this ongoing, understanding as we gain experience with this powerful set of technologies, that data architecture is going to be increasingly distributed, that storage therefore will be increasingly distributed, and that cloud services will flow to where the data is required, utilizing storage technologies that can best serve that set of workload. So it's a more complex world that demands new levels of simplicity, ease of use, and optimization. So that's where we're going to start our conversation. So these crucial questions of how data, storage, and cloud are going to come together to create hybrid architectures was the basis for a great CUBE conversation between SiliconANGLE Wikibon's David Vellante and HPE's Sundip Aurora. Let's hear what they had to say. Talk about, let's talk about, the, break down those three things. Cost efficiency, ease of use, and, and resource optimization. Let's start with cost efficiency. So obviously there's TCO. There's also the way in which I consume. Yep. Right? The, the people I presume are looking for a, a different pricing model. Um, is that, are you hearing that? Yeah, absolutely. So as part of the cost of, uh, uh, of running their business and being able to operate like a cloud, everybody's looking at a variety of different procurement and utilization models. One of the ways HPE provides a utilization model that can map to their cloud journey, a public cloud journey, is through GreenLake. The ability to use and consume data on demand, consume compute on demand, across the entire portfolio of products HPE has, essentially is what our GreenLake journey looks like. And, and Let's go into ease of use. So, what do you mean by that? I mean, people they think cloud, they think swipe the credit card and start, you know, deploying machines. Um, what do you mean by ease of use? For us, ease of use translates back to how do you uh, map to a simpler operating and support model. Okay. For us, the support model uh, is the uh, is the key for customers to be able to to realize the benefits of going to the cloud. Uh, to get to a simpler support model we use AI ops. And for us, AI ops means using a product called InfoSight. InfoSight is a product that uh, is, uses deep learning and machine learning algorithms to look at a wide net of call home data from physical resources out there, and then be able to take that data and make it actionable. And the action behind that is predictiveness, 
the prescriptiveness of creating automated support tickets and closing automated support tickets without anybody ever having to pick up a phone and call IT support. That InfoSight model now is being expanded across the board to all HPE products. It started with Nimble. Now InfoSight is available on 3PAR, it's available on Synergy, and a recent announcement said it's also available on ProLiance. And we expect that InfoSight becomes the glue, the automation AI glue that goes across the entire portfolio of HPE products. So this is a great example of applying uh, AI to data. Yeah. Uh, so it's like call home taking to a whole new level, isn't it? Yeah, it absolutely is. And in fact, what it does is, it uses the call home data that we've had for a long time with products like 3 par which essentially was amazing data, but not being actioned on in an automated fashion. It takes that data and now it creates an automation task around it. And many times that automation task leads to much simpler support experience. All right, the third item you mentioned was resource optimization. Let's, let's drill down into that. Uh, I, I infer from that there's, there are performance implications, there's maybe governance, compliance, you know, physical placement, can you elaborate, add some color to that? Yeah, so I think it's all of the above that he just talked about. It's definitely about applying the right performance level to the right set of applications. You know, we call this application aware storage. The ability to be able to understand which application is creating the data allows us to understand how that data needs to be accessed, which in turn means we know where it needs to reside. One of the things that HPE is doing in the storage domain is creating a common storage fabric with the cloud. We call that the fabric for the cloud. The idea there is that we have a single layer between the on-premises and off-premises uh, resources that allows us to move data as needed depending on the application needs and depending on the user needs. So there's crucial new factors that have to be incorporated into everyone's thinking of cost efficiency, ease of use, and resource optimization is going to place new types of stress on the storage hierarchy. It's going to require new technologies to better support digital transformation. David Floyer, an analyst here at Wikibon, has been a leading thinker of the relationship between the storage hierarchy and workloads and digital thinking for quite some time. I had a great conversation with David not too long ago. Let's hear what he had to say about this new storage hierarchy and the new technologies that are going to make possible these changes. David, you've been looking at this notion of modern storage architectures for 10 years now, and you've been relatively prescient in understanding what's going to happen. You were one of the first guys to predict well in advance of everybody else that the crossover between flash and HDD was going to happen sooner rather than later. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time quizzing you. What do you see as a modern storage architecture? Let's just let it rip. Okay, well let's start with one simple observation. Uh, the days of standalone systems uh, for data have gone. We're in a software defined world and you want to be able to run those uh, data architectures anywhere where you, the data is. And that means in your data center where you've created, or in the cloud, or in the public cloud, or at the edge. You want to be able to be flexible enough to be able to do all of the data services where the best place is, and that means everything has to be software driven. Software defined is the first proposition of a modern data storage Absolutely. architecture. Absolutely. Second. So the second thing is that uh, there are different types of technology. Uh, you have the very fastest storage, um, which is in the, in, in the uh, DRAM itself. Uh, you have NVDIMM, which is the next one down from that. Expensive, but a lot cheaper than the DIMM. And then you have different sorts of flash. You have the high performance flash, and you have the uh, 3D flash, you know, as many layers as you can, which is much cheaper flash. And then at the bottom you have uh, HDDs and, and even tape uh, as storage devices. So how, the key question is, how do you manage that sort of environment? Well, let me stop you, because it still sounds like we still have a storage hierarchy. Absolutely. And it still yeah. sounds like that hierarchy is defined largely in terms of access speeds yep. 
and cost. price points. Price points, yes. Those are the two Mason. And, and bandwidth and latency as well are within Which that. are tied into those. Which, which are tied into those, yes. So what you, if you're going to have this everywhere and you need services everywhere, what you have to have is an architecture which takes away all of that complexity so that you, all you see from an application point of view is data and how it gets there and, and how it's put away and how it's stored and how it's protected, that's under the covers. So the first thing is you need a virtualization of that data layer. The, uh, the physical layer. The, the, the virtualization of that physical right, layer, right. yes. And secondly, you need that physical layer to extend to all the places that may be using this data. You, you don't want to be constrained to this data set lives here. You want to be able to say, okay, uh, I want to move this uh, piece of programming to the data as quickly as I can. That's much, much faster than moving the data to the, uh, to the processing. So, I want to be able to know where all the data is for this particular data set or file or whatever it is, where they all are, how they connect together, uh, what the latency is between everything. I want to understand that architecture and I want a virtualized view of that uh, across that whole, the nodes that make up my hybrid cloud. So let me be example. clear here. Uh, so, uh, so we are going to use a software-defined infrastructure yeah. that allows us to place the physical devices that have the right cost performance characteristics where they need to be based on the physical realities of latency, uh, you know, power availability, hardening, et cetera. And uh, the network. But, uh, and the network, but we want to mask that complexity from the application, application Completely. developer, and application administrator. Yes. And software defined helps do that, but doesn't completely do it. No. Uh, well, you, you want services which say. Exactly. So there's services on top, on top of, of all of that that, that, are, that are recognizable by the developer, by the, you know, the business person, by the administrator, as they think about how they use data towards those outcomes. Not use the storage or use the device, but use the data. Data to, to reach uh, application outcomes. That's absolutely right. And that's uh, what I call the pl data plane, which is a series of services which enable that to happen and, and driven by the application requirements. So we've themselves. looked at this and some of the services include, you know, end-to-end -end compression, uh, deduplication, de backup restore, security, data Encryption, protection. Yeah. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the services that now the right. enterprise buyer needs to think yes. about, so that those services can be applied with you know uh, by policy. Yes. Wherever they're required, based on the utilization of the data. Correct. Where it's going, where the event takes place. And then you still have, at the bottom of that, you have the uh, d different types of devices. You still have, you still want. You don't have hamsters making stuff <laughs> You still want uh, right. hard disks, for example. Yeah, exactly. They're not disappearing. Uh, but if you're going to use hard disks, then you want to use it in the right way for using a hard disk. You know, you want to give it large blocks. You, you want to have it going uh, sequentially in and out all the time. So the storage administration and the data, the physical schema and everything else is still important in all this. Absolutely. But it's less important, less the centerpiece of the buying decision. Correct. Increasingly, it's how well does this stuff support the services that the business is using to achieve yes. their outcomes. And, and you want to use, of course, the, the lowest cost that you can. And there will be many different uh, uh, options open, more and more options open. But, but the automation of that is absolutely key. And that automation from a vendor point of view, one of the key things they have to do is to be able to learn from the, the usage by their customers across as broad a number of customers as they can, learn what works, what doesn't work, learn so that they can put automation into their own software, their own software services. So it sounds like we're talking four things. We got, uh, we got software defined, uh, still have a storage hierarchy defined by cost and performance, but with mainly semiconductor stuff. We've got great data services that are relevant yep. to the business and automation that mask the complexity from yeah, everything. And a lot of the artificial AI there is the auto automated. Running things, uh, fantastic. Uh, so David's thinking on the new storage hierarchy and how it's going to relate to new classes of workload is a baseline for a lot of the changes happening in the industry today. But we still have to turn technology 
into services that deliver higher levels of value. Once again, let's go back to Dave Vellante's conversation with Sundip Aurora and hear what Sundip has to say about some of the new digital services, some of the new data services that are going to be essential to supporting these new hybrid storage capabilities. We have, and what it does, it, it gives us the opportunity now not just to look at call home data from storage, but then also look at call home data from the compute side. And then what we can do is correlate the data coming back to have better predictability and outcomes on your data center operations as opposed to doing it at the layer of infrastructure. And you also set out a vision of this, this orchestration yep. layer. Could you talk more about that? Are we talking about across all clouds, whether it's on-prem or at the edge or in the public cloud? We yeah, we are. We're talking about making it as simple as possible where the customers are not necessarily picking and choosing. It allows them to have a strategy that allows them to go across the data center, whether it's a public cloud building their own private infrastructure uh, or running on a traditional on-premises SAN structure. So this vision for us, Cloud Fabric vision for us, allows for, for customers to do that. And what about uh, software-defined storage? Yeah. Where does that fit into this whole equation? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because that was the third tenant of what HPE truly brings to our customers. Software-defined is, is something that allows us to uh, maximize the utilization of the existing resources that our customers have. So what we've done is we've partnered with um, a great deal of really uh, strong software-defined uh, vendors such as Commvault, Cohesity, Cumulo, Datera. You know we work very closely with the likes of Veeam, uh, Zerto, and and the goal there is to 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 provide our customers with a whole range of options to drive uh, building a software-defined infrastructure built off the Apollo series of products. Apollo servers or storage products for us are extremely dense storage products that allow for both cost and resource optimization. So Sundip made some fantastic points about how new storage technologies are going to be turned into usable services that digital businesses will require as they conceive of their overall hybrid storage approach. Here's an opportunity to hear a little bit more about what HPE thinks about some of these crucial areas. Let's hear what they have to say. In this Chalk Talk short take, I'm going to introduce you to HPE Primera Storage. If you want the agility of the public cloud, but need the resiliency and speed of high-end storage for mission-critical applications, this forces a trade-off of agility for resiliency. High-end storage is fast and reliable, but falls short on agility and simplicity. What if you could have it all? What if you could have both agility and resiliency for your mission-critical apps? Introducing the world's most intelligent storage for mission-critical apps, HPE Primera. It delivers an on-demand experience so storage is instantly available. Appleware resiliency backed with a 100% availability guarantee. Predictive acceleration so apps aren't fast some of the time, but fast all the time with embedded AI. Let me tell you more about HPE Primera. It was engineered to drive unique value in high-end storage. There are four areas we focus on. Global intelligence, powered with the most advanced AI for infrastructure, InfoSight and all active architecture, with multiple nodes for higher resiliency and limitless parallelization. A service-centric OS that eliminates the risk and simplifies management. And timeless storage with a new ownership experience that keeps getting better. To learn more, go to hpe.com slash storage slash Primera. So that's been a great series of conversations about hybrid storage. I want to thank Sundip Aurora of HPE, David Floyer of Wikibon Silicon Angle, Jim Kabilis of Wikibon Silicon Angle, and my colleague David Vellante for helping out on the interview side. I'm Peter Burris, and this has been another Wikibon the Cube digital community event sponsored by HPE. Now stay tuned for our crowd chat, which will be your opportunity to ask your questions, share your experiences, and push forward the community's thinking on hybrid storage. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Let's crowd chat.